come into the media that uh, a number of victims um, have corresponded with uh, the unionist parties around the issue of unionist unity candidate. Your name has cropped up in the media as a potential choice. Uh, could you tell us the background to that and uh, have you reached a decision yet? Well, basically what happened, uh, some of the committee and other members of the group here asked me a number of days ago, would the be happy enough, or would I be happy enough with uh, them contacting the parties and proposing myself as a joint candidate, basically. So I said I, because I didn't uh, see it going too far. So they did that, and on Friday evening we got a response from the DUP, as you can see here, uh, Mr. Robinson himself, uh, and the party, basically saying that they, they were prepared to consider me as a united candidate. And it sort of took me by surprise, but I have to give credit where credit's due, the fact that they did. Then I found out that the unionists actually were prepared to discuss the issue of myself as a united candidate. So it actually started to become quite serious uh, because it seemed to be a case that there was a possibility that I could be actually proposed as a United Candidate. But on Sunday when I was um, on my way up to a memorial service in just outside Cullahanna uh, for a family, their father was kidnapped and murdered uh, and he'd been tortured for a few days. Whenever I seen that taking place and listened to the service on the side of the road where they were commemorating, uh, I think it was the 38th anniversary, I realised that uh, I couldn't take on the job if I was to be put forward and if I was to be elected because I know there would be things I'd have to compromise on and I realised that I would not be prepared to compromise. You can't compromise on certain issues and uh, we then contacted uh, the DUP and the Unionist Party to tell them thanks very much for the support. It was encouraging to see that they were prepared to consider myself as a joint candidate uh, on behalf of both parties. And I believe even the TUV was uh, prepared to back me as well. But no, I, I couldn't. My heart lies here in South Armagh. The issues I know about are in South Armagh. And although I wish that they could come to an agreement in South Belfast on a unionist candidate, uh, unfortunately I'd have to pull my name out of the hat because I just, it's not in my nature to compromise. And uh, after that on Sunday, I didn't, it more or less said to me, well, uh, the men that were murdered in this area and the women need somebody to say something because if not, they'll be forgot about. Just like that. So in another exclusive for Fair Media, you are confirming that you will stand for Nurian Armagh in the forthcoming Westminster elections. Yes, I am going to stand. It's the last minute, like this is Monday and the papers are uh, have to be in by tomorrow. As usual, it's a last minute thing. I'll not be going around the doors, I'll not be putting literature out. Uh, I'll let it know that I'm standing. And if people vote for me, or people know my stance. They know where I stand. I do not support terrorists in government. I do support peace. I do support uh, the fact that we need to move on. But I don't think we have to sacrifice our principles and what is morally right and the teaching of the Bible. Uh, I don't think we need to forget them things so we can have peace in this country. And I don't think I need to put that on literature. I think the majority of people will know that. So I, I don't care if we only get 100 votes or 200 votes. I just feel after that service yesterday and seeing the family and seeing the hurt and the pain on their faces that somebody needs to stand up and say something and do something. And if it's only a hundred families that can come to me and say, well, he thanks for that, uh, they will make it more than worth my while. And we understand that you intend to fight your campaign entirely online and through the media, that you will not be using traditional methods such as paper-based literature, canvases, posters, that few will be the first candidate possibly in history to run an entirely web-based and media-based election campaign. Yeah, well, this is something I'm not too fair with this whole uh, this emailing and this uh, Twitter and Facebook. But a lot of the young ones, 
uh, tell me that uh, th they're very interested and very keen on it and a lot of them say that they actually want to look after that for me so th they're keen let them at it um, and say I'm not going to go around wrapping doors unless people want me to go to doors I'll go to I'll answer any question ask by any uh, member of the constituency or any politician what I would like to see is a debate with the politicians on a platform and let's get these points across and let's see who's right and who's wrong um, if people want to use the internet and uh, Facebook and Twitter and all these things um, and they're prepared to do it for me I'm gonna let them because uh, it's something different it's something new so why not try it some commentators have been surprised at the willingness of parties to consider you for obviously in the past you have certainly cooperated with parties but you haven't been afraid to be critical of political parties and have managed to stay above party politics itself. What sort of compromise did you fear uh, in going forward as a joint candidate between the Ulster Unionist Conservatives and the DUP? Well there has been nothing specific put to me but I know that if I was going to be a joint candidate for both the DUP and the Unionists, first off I would probably have to drop my uh, opposition to the agreement. I can't do that. Uh, my conscience would not allow me to do that and the people that I represent here have been the victims in South Amma. No matter if it's only a few hundred or a few thousand, they still are the people where I have my heart, or sorry, where my heart lies with. And uh, I just feel that if I went forward, I'd be misleading the people in who I was and what I was, and I won't do that. I am what I am. Uh, if you want to join a political party to get somewhere, that's the way to go. Uh, that's why I've never done it. Um, I always stand on my own two feet. But somewhere along the line, uh, people say, you know, we have to move on. Well, we do have to move on. But moving on does not mean you compromise everything that is morally right. You do not change uh, what is morally right to get a political settlement that is completely wrong. One of the issues that victims have raised, and you have certainly expressed, is concern that in 8 out of 18 constituencies uh, there are no candidates running that would be opposed to Sinn Féin IRA and government, uh, an issue that's very dear to the hearts of victims. Um, is this one of your reasons for now making an announcement about Nuri and Armagh? Well, it certainly is. Uh, like, I can sit here and say that I have not even got a leaflet printed to do with this election because I seriously was not considering uh, taking on to do it. But whenever I looked at the situation, that there is not one individual standing in the areas that suffered the most who is actually opposed to terrorists in government. I, I just couldn't believe it. And uh, I feel I owe it to, well, first off, my own family, but also the other people, the men and women who are moored in this area, to give them a voice. Now, there might only be a few hundred votes, I don't know, but whatever it is, at least it is representing a voice that people died for. And people did not die so that Conor Murphy and Martin McGuinness and Gerry Adams could be in our government. The people, the very people who murdered our loved ones are now in government. And we were told they would have nothing to do with the police and justice. We now have a committee. Now, if a committee is not needed, why is it set up? The Justice Minister has a committee who the Vice Chairman on it is a hunger striker. You know, he was charged with murder. And I may be a lone voice. That's because a lot of people are, are afraid. They're blackmailed into this. If you don't vote for one or vote for the other, you're going to let Sinn Féin in. There's neither two of them going to get elected. So with me throwing my hat into the ring, all I'm doing is giving the people the opportunity to let their voice be heard, and especially the people who served and died for their country. Because I believe, and well, I know for a fact, that quite a few of them out there do not agree with Mort McGuinness and Jerry Adams in our government of this country. And they certainly don't believe that there should be a committee set up that has got two terrorists on it who are involved with the Justice Minister.